start current scoutmaster at 2 7 30, so that makes me 17. <laughs> <laughs> So we have some, some so we'll, we'll be uh, going through some questions for each other and, and hopefully it will help the boys understand where the troop's been and help, help you all understand where the troop is today. So uh, uh, Barry, when did, our, when did our current troop banner first grace the skies above Camp Marie and who created it? Uh, the first troop banner was created around 1985. Uh, Mrs. Dick sold the banner, and I helped put the Romans in the bed. And then Mrs. Dick sold on all the Canterbury badges and awards and trolls, and the boys put the Canterbury ribbons in the hole. Uh, has the troop been doing well at Canterbury, Larry? The troop's been doing pretty good at Canterbury. Uh, we've been the largest troop in the district, Canterbury, for, for several years now. And in 2014, our troop had 97 scouts, and we had over 50 at Camp Marie. Uh, during that, you know, during the, there was a period in Camp Marie where uh, I guess they weren't very competitive. Other troops were kind of downplaying it. And uh, they brought the competition back with the decathlon. And uh, as far as I'm aware, there's an SPL here, Koji, which kind of amped up the spirit of competition. So uh, this year, for example, we went in with uh, four patrol, five patrols, I think, and our Tiger Patrol, which is our older boy patrol, won the decathlon event. Uh, our Dragon Slayers won the decathlon for for uh, the regular boy patrols, and Tigers also won Spirit Award. So, so as Scoutmaster, I kind of have bragging rights for the year that we won the camper. So, <laughs> we, we did really well this year. The boys are really proud of themselves. Uh, have we always been a backpacking troop, Barry? As far back as I can remember, uh, we stress backpacking. And in the beginning, Mr. Crowan and I and the other committee people uh, attempted to have at least one backpack in each front. Wow. Uh, is the troop still as active as uh, we were then? Or are you getting lazy? <laughs> <laughs> We, we still focus on backpacking. We, uh, 
as you saw from the slideshow, we do rock climbing and kayaking, we do mountain biking, uh, but we're still primarily backpacking through. Uh, in fact, this year we, we just got accepted to uh, Philmont for 2018, so we're going, we're going back there again. Uh, we've been to Philmont in 2010, 2012, 2015, and now it's going to be 2018 so, and 2000. And 95. And 95. So we're keeping on the, the tradition. You know, we've done other outings such as Mount Whitney, Yosemite, Tahoe area. So we backpack every year. And with Philmont coming in, we're really going to put the focus on, on the backpacking for the, uh, the monthly events. Uh, we've had one scout reach a thousand miles backpacking that we know of. And here, he, he's here today, so I'm going to have to embarrass him. Brian, there you go, stand up. A thousand miles. <coughs> Start back there with 598, and he weighs 105. <laughs> <laughs> we have Jack Hector up front. Stand up, Jack. He's got 150 nights of camping. silhouetted against the moon and thought that's a cool picture and we just sort of keep it. But someone saw the picture and uh, he suggested uh, to use it as our logo and I think Mr. Okui's son, uh, who's a graphic artist, kind of tidied the picture up and made it into our current logo. Uh, and then uh, Mr. Kim Bond, uh, who is now in Troop 7 53. 53. Uh, Brand X. He carved uh, neckerchief slides. So he used the, the picture and he carved the first neckerchief slide that most of us have today. And I took a copy of that slide uh, and made Prosper Paris uh, neckerchief slides with a little hanger hook behind it. And they didn't last very long. They looked kind of yucky when, the, when you bang them because they're all turned white. And uh, we proceed now, and I think today we do it with, with uh, 3D graphics. 3D printers, yeah. 3D printers. Yeah. So it's been around for a while. Um, I've got another question for you. Okay. Uh, why is there a loose patrol for adults, and how did we get our name? Well, well on one of the monthly campouts, uh, some of the adults took a look at what the boys were eating, and they were eating very nutritious food. Pop tarts and pop ramen. <laughs> <laughs> and, and we thought that's not very conducive to uh, good backpacking and good camping. So we decided that uh, we would form a patrol of the adults and uh, show the boys what camping and cooking out in the wilderness was. And we did that and, and then we kind of gave them a taste and the smell of it and they said, hmm, that's good. And we challenged them. They, they had a competition with us to see who could, who could cook the most gourmet meal. And one of the things I remember when we were on East Fork of the Lion, uh, we ended up cooking uh, portobello mushrooms uh, on an open fire. 
and that was the start. And in order to do, in order to keep this tradition, we thought, well, we're going to have to name our patrol. And on a visit to, to Canada, I noticed that there was a kind of a different patrol name that they didn't have, and that was the moose. So I picked up some whole bunch of Canadian moose patches, and we had our moose patrol. <laughs> Uh, how's it going now, Larry? Is it any better? Yeah, pretty good. Well, we still have our pop tart challenge. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, the, the food kind of goes up and down. The moose food is always great. Yeah. <laughs> we always eat We always eat well. And if they want to come and wash our dishes, we can maybe you know help the starving scout out. Yeah. Uh, but but uh, the food goes up and down. So lately. What we've done is the moose has started food challenges. So on an outing, we'll uh, decide that, hey, one night we'll have Italian theme, and the patrols pick out, you know, get a menu together and try to, to cook something Italian, and or we'll do, uh, you know, eggs, breakfast with eggs theme, and, and they'll tackle that. So, so it's, uh, we're working on it. They've got a. Since, since, we, since we started the moose challenges, the food's gotten a lot better on the scout side. And uh, we go around and judge it, and it's, it, they, they let us eat it. We actually do eat it, so it's, it's pretty good. <laughs> it's edible. Speaking of eating food, you still uh, hike up to Mount um, Pinos and uh, Sheep Camp, like, uh, like one of my favorite hikes we used to do? Every year, even, when we, even this year when we're gonna go canoeing, uh, one of the one of the outings we do for, for long term training is going up to sheep camp. So uh, it's it's like a rite of passage for for moving on to, to long term. And uh, sheep camp we for sheep camp outing we start at Camp Three Falls, which is like 5,300 feet, and you end up at, at sheep camp, which is about 8,200 feet, and that's. So it's almost 3,000 feet of climbing, and you really don't do a lot of climbing to the last mile. <laughs> so so it, is, it is really a rite of passage, and uh, we continue that on today. It, it is a long-term staple for us. Um, and it's, it, Chief Camp is also unique because uh, it's the only place we know of in Southern California where uh, you can find watermelon above 8,000 feet. <laughs> it, it is just incredible. So I have a question for Barry that, that's been on our minds, which is, uh, when was the first watermelon found at Sheep Camp? Well, I think it was on one of the first hikes that I made up to up, up there, but uh, I didn't get to go the hard way. I got to go the easy way. Some of the boys couldn't make it uh, later in the day, so I brought uh, several boys up and we went up to Pinus. We went up the back way to Pinus and we walked in from Pinus to Sheep Camp. Uh, and on the way, uh, just before we got to Sheep Camp, uh, I noticed there was a nice little meadow uh, just above the highest campsite at Sheep Camp. So we went exploring and, and we found some interesting things up there. And then at supper time, uh, we suggested a couple of the boys go take a look up, up there where you see all the green. And uh, a young man by the name of Scott Mass first person to find a watermelon up top of sheep camp. <laughs> I don't know how they got there, but they're still coming. Maybe. <laughs> uh, now, you used to do uh, some wilderness survival outings. What was special about your wilderness survival outing? Well, Mr. Crone uh, kind of talked us into this one, and uh, we sort of said on the wilderness survival outings, uh, much like they do now in Santa Cruz, uh, you weren't allowed to bring tents and you had to build your own shelters. So when the boys were building their shelters, uh, a couple of the senior patrol boys would set up a compass course. And uh, after they built their shelters, uh, the boys had to go and do the compass course uh, because at the end of the compass course was their food. <laughs> and if they didn't do the compass course right, they went hungry that night. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. And then uh, they also had to cook their food uh, and you could do it a lot of the times uh, out there uh, without pots and pans. So there was a lot of hobos too type of cooking. Uh, they did pretty good most of the time. Gary, you want to talk about some of the food you provided? 
Uh, I don't remember what good you do. Well, I hope you're always good by interesting gourds and potatoes and vegetables that you would normally not see. But I, I remember vividly when you walked around that one time with a snake skin around your neck. Yeah, oh, okay, I remember that story. <laughs> <laughs> some turkey necks that I picked up and uh, they were about you know so long and uh, this was like he scored a lion and he had this thing and the boy didn't know quite what it was and I wouldn't tell him it was the mystery meat <laughs> and uh, kept asking me and kept asking me and finally I, I said I don't remember but then I walked through camp with a, with a rattlesnake skin around my shoulders and said you know I'm not sure but I can't remember what it was, but you know, just it's good stuff. Don't worry. Go ahead and eat it. <laughs> <laughs> and they thought it was rattlesnake. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot about that. <laughs> <laughs> so we, uh, we sell popcorn in the fall, uh, that's a nationwide effort uh, for the scouts. Uh, they now have a new thing called camp cards that, that, that the district sells. So it's uh, like five bucks off of Albertson and some other discounts and the boys get half of the five dollars. Uh, we have an annual garage sale in April that we just completed very successfully. Uh, at the garage sale, we've had some very generous donations that have really helped the troop. So thank you all for that. Uh, we used to do uh, 
car wash tickets, and that's kind of gone by the wayside. And the entertainment books have, have kind of gone by the wayside. I think there's too much competition there. Uh, many evil candidates still raise funds by uh, uh, hitting up dinners in the uh, diners, uh, restaurants in the area for uh, uh, meal nights where the, where the uh, restaurant will donate a part of, portion of their proceeds to the to the Eagle Project, the Eagle Candidates Project. So that's really helpful. Um, we also get some donations uh, from generous uh, private organizations, families, and indiv individuals. And uh, these these donations have really helped some of our scouts uh, make it to summer camp and some of the more expensive long term outings. So uh, the fundraisers have changed, but but we're still able to help the scouts and help the scouts help themselves. Uh, there was an interesting story of heroism in uh, Boyd's life about a rescue attempt on Mount Bain's Tower. Can you tell us a little about that incident? Uh, yeah, I think that was around 1986 now, was it? <coughs> uh, when we were doing one of our monthly outings on Bain Powell. We did it a little bit early in the year and it had been a year that had a lot of snow. So uh, as we worked our way up made Mount Bain Powell, it got uh, slipperier and, and, and so on. Uh, and about a third of the way up, uh, we heard an awful series of screams uh, from off, off to our, I think, up, up ahead of us. And then when we looked up, we saw a body tumbling down the side of the mountain, uh, screaming and screaming. Uh, so we stopped and decided, what should we do? So the boys stayed, stood still, and uh, Mr. Crone, my older son, Kevin, and Tom McCaffrey went towards the boy to see if they could, the, the person, to see if they could help him at all. And myself, Mr. Marino, and my younger son followed them and then went down back to the car uh, to go to the ranger station and call a ranger. Uh, we made it to the ranger station, and they, the ranger came up and they sent a helicopter uh, to, to rescue the boy. Uh, and uh, a young man by the name of Chris Smolin. Uh, they took him to the hospital, but he uh, passed the next day. Uh, and his employer, uh, Rockwell International, uh, in response to his family, sent the troop $110. And we used that to purchase our very first eagle plaque in the back in, in memory of him and the, and the uh, situation that happened. And uh, six, six members of the troop, uh, as you'll see in your highlights, received uh, uh, awards from the Boy Scouts for, for their efforts. That's, that's about as much as uh, we can get into for now. All right, well, thank you, Mary, for your time. And, and I think overall our troop is, has stood the test of time. We, we try to mainly maintain the traditions and uh, thank you all for, for, there's a lot of you here that, that have laid the foundation for, for the traditions we have today. And thank you all for your, your time and your efforts. Uh, I know the boys appreciate